how does a song like Justice come to be? Well, like I said earlier, you know, Banks had given me a cassette tape that basically had every every riff that ended up on the uh, the chorus LP. So it, I had a lot to work with, and some of the some of the guitar parts were like intertwined with different songs. So a lot of that stuff Banks worked out in the end. So the music, you know, for Justice, it had that it had that real powerful start and stop. You know, so like. You know, when bands did a start and stop, I always think it's great when they stop and then they come into it and they break it down or whatever. Uh, so Banks, Banks had that and, that and and those start and stops were real were real prominent in the song. So I was like, okay, I, I, I got to be yelling something over that empty break. So I had always, um, I had always thought that um, you go into a restaurant, you know, and you don't see, actually don't see this very often anymore, but there used to be signs that would say, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone at any time. Remember those signs? Yeah. And I always thought, like, I've never been in a situation where the person who was the proprietor of the store would be like, you, get out of here. And, like, just didn't have a reason. Like, it's just like, if you just hate the guy or you don't like the way someone's face looked. I always thought that, like, that's a, that's a weird, like, yeah, you can just kick anyone out for any reason that you see fit. But I always thought that that term, you know, we reserve the right like I don't necessarily. So I always thought, like, oh, I, I, I like, I always would say to people, oh, I reserve the right to, to not take part in that, or you know, I, I'm gonna go you ahead. You still say that? Yeah, I, mean, I reserve the right to, you know, just you know, it's it's it's, it's a polite way to say, ah, you know, I'm, I'm probably probably not interested in, in you or, or that at all. So I was trying to, you know, I really wanted it to be, to be focused lyrically on, um, you know, people that. That, that were, you know, drug or alcohol abusers, or that was a big part of their life, like partying, and like couldn't wait for fucking Friday night to get that, you know, like, like I don't want any part of that lifestyle. So I, I was thinking like, how do I, how do I push, push these people away in my mind in a way that, that doesn't sound sophomoric? And although I was 18, and a lot of those lyrics, I, you know, yeah, I look back now, and I'm like, man, that, that's really sophomoric. It's really, it's really childish to, to, to think that way. At the time, it sounded so tough. I reserve the right to ignore your kind, and I reserve the right to remain unblind. So I'm not going to be blinded by the the bullshit that you say is is the norm or is is what uh, is what you know normal kids at this age do. Like I wasn't, I didn't want any part of that. So I wanted it to be, I wanted it to sound intelligent, and I wanted it to be bold, and I wanted it to really be um, powerful in in those breaks. And like Banks had that real musical melody and then I thought, ooh, maybe I'll maybe I'll try to sing something here, but it was just too too good and too metal and melodic. I didn't want to touch it. The only regret I have is not singing over that first uh, if you, you, know, you listen to the song, it does like a whole verse and I, and I basically there's there's no vocals there whatsoever. I always regret not putting in the extra effort and writing another verse there or possibly just re repeating the the, the verse I wrote. That's the only regret I have to that song, but that was like our breadwinner. That was the song that I wanted a song that when those breaks hit, every person that was listening to that song was yelling it too, and we accomplished that. The first time we ever played that song, and you know, all 150, 200 kids did that, I, you know, my heart just melted.